Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Helicopter Parachute Rescue System Demonstrated. Full-scale model of V-247 Vigilant UAV unveiled. And Transport Canada announces certification of the Bombardier Global 7500. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's October 3rd and this is Airborne Unlimited. On June 22nd, the Zephyr light turbine helicopter successfully completed the first test of its exclusive parachute safety system when the technology was dramatically demonstrated over the Oristano Fidnosu Airport. Zephyr is currently the only helicopter equipped with a ballistic parachute. Installed above the main rotor, the parachute is designed as a backup for conditions where auto rotation cannot be performed. The landmark test has validated the use of ballistic parachute safety systems in helicopters for the first time. Indeed, such a test has never been filmed or documented in the entire history of aerospace technology. During the test, the helicopter reached forward flight at 30 knots above 950 feet of altitude. The engine was then deliberately shut down to simulate a failure. The helicopter's descent speed stabilized at less than 15 knots. The ground impact resulted in deceleration peaks well within those required for the safeguard of human life, as routinely assessed in crash tests for the aeronautic and automotive industries. After the break, Primera Air ceases operations. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Man, the AMA Joan Report, our website or podcast, just email to news by at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Dutch-based carrier Premier Air has filed for bankruptcy, announcing the cessation of all operations on its website. The airline cited delays in the delivery of new Airbus aircraft as one of the reasons for the move. The board for the airline said that it cannot continue operations without additional financing. Premier Air has been in existence for 14 years. The company says that it lost nearly $13 million in 2017 after it had to ground an airplane due to corrosion problems. Aeropract USA has announced that Kestrel Aviation Services in Cottonwood, Arizona has been approved as the first U.S.-based Aeropract service center and dealer for the award-winning Aeropract A-22 and A-32 aircraft lines. Aeropract USA, based in Somerville, Tennessee, imports and distributes SLSA aircraft manufactured by Aeropract Manufacturing, SPZOO, based in Kiev, Ukraine. A skydiving instructor somehow became separated from a student after deploying the parachute during a tandem jump last Thursday and fell to the ground, resulting in his fatal injury. The instructor was employed by Skydive New England and identified as Brett Bigford, 41, of Rochester, New Hampshire. During the jump, Bigford somehow became separated from a student in the parachute, and the canopy was deployed. The student reportedly landed safely. It took more than a day before Bigford's body was located. 
The Russian-built Mi-17 helicopter that carried the first CIA operatives into Afghanistan to prepare for a military assault is being enshrined at the CIA museum, which has been called the best museum you'll never see. The helicopter that carried the seven CIA paramilitary operatives and a three-person flight crew into the Panjshir Valley was painted to resemble aircraft used by the Taliban. But to be sure they did not take friendly fire, they added the call numbers 91101 to the tail of the aircraft, referencing the 9-11 attacks. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Military officials have unveiled a full-scale model of the Bell V-247 Vigilant UAV that has been offered for the Marine Air Ground Task Force Unmanned Expeditionary Drone, or MUX. Shown for the first time at Marine Corps Base Quantico in Virginia last week, the aircraft is an unmanned armed escort aircraft that could be both an offensive weapon system and a command and control aircraft. Bell claims the V-247 can carry an internal load of 2,000 pounds and a sling load of 9,000 pounds. The range of the aircraft is reported to be 1,300 nautical miles and can operate for 8 hours on station with a 600-pound mission payload. The maximum time on station is listed as 12 hours. The combat range is listed at 500 to 800 nautical miles. The Vigilant is a tilt-rotor aircraft. The Marines will initially use the drone for airborne early warning, command and control communications, data relay, and ISR functions. The Vigilant is currently in its advanced research and design phase. Bell is using many of its lessons learned from development of the V-280 Valor aircraft to incorporate the capabilities requested by the USMC. After these messages, Transport Canada announced his certification of the Bombardier Global 7500. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. Transport Canada has certified the newest Bombardier business aircraft, the Global 7500. Certification by the FAA and EASA is expected to follow shortly. The certification of our clean sheet Global 7500 business jet is a defining moment for Bombardier, for our employees and for the industry, as we approach entry into service, said David Colill, president of Bombardier Business Aircraft. Thanks to the rigor and innovation of our design and test program, the Global 7500 aircraft has succeeded in elevating every standard by which a business jet is measured. Comfort, luxury, performance, and a smooth ride. At entry into service, this aircraft will meet the latest in all the most stringent certification requirements and is set to redefine international business jet travel. We couldn't be more proud of this achievement. The Global 7500 aircraft has accumulated more than 2,700 flight hours since the flight testing program began in November 2016. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside for normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.